Ever since I came across Adding One Star Wars Revisited, I not only fell in love with it, but I also wondered how he was able to create some of those changes that he made. And that's one of the things that got me interested into learning how to do visual arts. And so I wanted to recreate my own Star Wars fan edit that's very similar to what Addy One did. And then I also wanted to vlog about it as well and show people how I was able to do it. I've been wanting to do that for years and so now I'm about to do so. One change that I saw from Addy One is that he took the Moss Eisley scene and in the special edition, a CG Ronto was added where it walks across the screen and you see nothing but its big fat butt just as the stormtrooper is pulling our heroes over to question them. And he was able to remove that by taking footage from what is called Project 4K77. And what that is is that there's a group of Star Wars fans who call themselves Team Negative. They took a 35 millimeter reel of the film, scanned it in 4K, and then Adewan took that clip and then color graded it, removed all the dirt and grain from it, and used that to remove the Ronto from the special edition footage. And so I'm going to go ahead and attempt to recreate that inside of Adobe After Effects. So let's hop on over. All right, so here I am inside of Adobe After Effects, and I'm going to go ahead and load in our footage. And I think my dog is going to go ahead and join us too. All right, so I have footage from Project 4K77, and I also have footage from the 2011 Blu-ray. So I'm going to go ahead and drag both of these clips into a new composition. And now I'm just going to go ahead and scrub ahead with the Blu-ray just until I get to the Moss Eisley scene where the trooper pulls them over to uh, question them. All right, now I got it trimmed all the way about there. I'm going to push N to trim the comp timeline and then trim comp to work area. There we go. So now I've got the Moss Eisley scene from the 2011 Blu-ray and from Project 4K77. Oops, I need to trim it up to the point, to that point shot there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and scrub forward until the shot comes in. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and drag our Blu-ray comp on top of this in our timeline here. And I'm just going to go ahead and shut it off. And then what I'm going to go ahead and do is go to Window or View, New Viewer, lock this composition, and then we'll click on this one. But that way I can look at them from side to side. There we go. Okay. So now that I got them side by side to reference, First thing I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to change the color of these blacks here. As you can see, they are very green looking. So I'm going to go ahead and take a new layer, adjustment layer. I'm going to go down to color correction and then curves. Click on the effects controls for the adjustment layer and I'm going to switch from RBG to green. And I'm going to target the darker areas, which is down here. And then maybe I'll put a point right there just so that the highlights are not affected. And then I'll start dragging this down a bit just to kind of get rid of some of those greens. Oh, and it's affecting the wrong layer. So, Control X. Okay, there we go. All right, that's looking pretty good there. And I see some yellow, so I'm going to go ahead and just add a bit of blue to the dark areas as well. Alright, so that looks pretty good there. If I shift this on and off, there we go. I'm just going to right click this and rename this. I'll just go to parentheses, black, so you see, black color correction. Okay, and then the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate our footage here, and then I'll push Alt, left bracket to trim it up to this point. 
I'm just gonna go ahead and scrub forward until we reach the end of the shot. And now what I'm gonna do is select each of these elements to kind of get them to match the Blu-ray footage here. And that's gonna take a lot of patience and rotoscoping, which honestly, rotoscoping is not my friend at all. So let's go ahead and start with the sky here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new adjustment layer here. Let me trim that. I'm going to trim this one as well too. Rename and just call this one CC for color correction. And this one I'm going to rename Sky Correction. Now I may be able to get away with it by doing a couple things. I can try Keen if I go to Color Range. If I just duplicate this, Control D, drag it on top. Uh, take the color range and then put it on this one. Hmm. Well, so far it's sort of working. Just kind of select all these blotchy areas just until the sky is completely black. All right, so that's looking pretty good there. I'll go ahead and unsolo that. And now I'm going to go ahead and take our color correction layer and let me go ahead and add another curves adjustment. And I just want to go ahead and control the brightness and contrast to kind of get it to match the Blu ray. So I'll kind of just start dragging the highlights down some, bring the shadows up a little bit. All right, so that's not looking too bad there. And now I will go ahead and correct the sky. I'm just going to add another curves. Go ahead and add some blue to it just to make the sky more bluish. Take the red down too, add some cyan to it. That's actually looking pretty good so far. Maybe pull the greens down a little bit. And then maybe just kind of add some contrast to the sky as well. See if I can just kind of get it to match with our footage so that it blends in nicely. Yeah, that's probably good. Now let me pull that up a little bit. All right, there we go. Now if I can get away with just using the color range, what I'm probably going to go ahead and do is uh, draw a mask on our sky correction adjustment layer just so that it's a little more in line with the buildings. Now, I don't know exactly how Addy One was able to do all of this, but this is just a predicted, uh, predictive way of me trying to achieve that look he did. All right, so that looks decent. Now I need to uh, go ahead and put click on the stopwatch there to set a keyframe for the mass path, and then I just kind of need to uh, do some good old rotoscoping. Rotoscoping is a long, tedious job here. So if you have like a playlist or a podcast to listen to, I would highly recommend you do so because this is a time consuming process. Effective, but time consuming. I do recall reading post by Adewan saying that this was the easier one to do because he just used this shot but the rest were hard because of rotoscoping. Now if I just click on mass path it's going to go ahead and highlight all the points here. Really what was Lucas thinking when he decided to add that Ronto? I'm going to go ahead and just add a couple more points here so I'll push G and then Click and drag. Now 
obviously it's not going to be perfect, but you know, really try to do the best you can. Told you, this is not my favorite uh, process. So just let me scrub through it as I go and for the most part it's not looking too bad. And now all I gotta do is try and see if I can get the rest of these colors to match with the Blu-ray. So I think what I'll go ahead and do is add in a selective color here, down to the yellows, bring that up and give it some red. And then take it down with some green. Probably a minus 20 should be good. I'll kind of bring darken the yellows up some. And then I'm going to go ahead and switch to the reds here and just kind of add some yellow to the reds. Maybe take away some of the uh, red saturation just so that it's not so much.
gonna go ahead and maybe just target the blues some. Maybe lighten the reds up some. Just so that you know. Definitely add some more punch to the blues there. Yeah, so far it's coming along pretty dandy. There are some areas where the blue is still bleeding, but we can fix that momentarily. Alright, I think I'm going to go to the lights here and maybe just bring those down some see if I can get the sand to kind of match this or maybe not that way I think I'll go ahead and try adding another curves draw a point right at the shadows there and then maybe just start dragging these down a bit I've gone through so many different attempts here to see which works and what doesn't. So that's coming along well. Then what I probably need to do is make the gonk droid match the color in the Blu-ray. I could probably just do that if I add another adjustment layer here. Draw a mask around our square friend. Yeah, there is some grain and dirt in here in the footage, but we'll get to that. So let's see what kind of colors we're dealing with here. Use saturation. So there is obviously a lot of red in here. So what I'll do is add a selective color, maybe take away the red, and just start adding some blue. Or, nah. 
Let's go to the neutrals and then start adding some blue. Now obviously you don't want to go all the way or full blast, but Alright, I'd say that probably matches there. And just like with the sky adjustment layer, I gotta rotoscope this one as well. And we'll try, we'll talk about like fixing uh, the, mm, the other areas that are getting affected by the adjustment layer's color. As soon as I'm just kind of done tracking here. seen in Marvel credits that there's rotoscope artists. I wonder how much money they make because this is arguably the most tedious work ever. You know, I've literally spent eons, you know, trying to find easy ways to do this. And then I buckled down and just did it the long, hard way. And then I stopped to think, maybe there was an easier and more realistic way of making this look good. But honestly, it's all up for debate. Okay, so. That's all done there. Let's go to the beginning of the shot. Uh, maybe I'll brighten that up a bit. All right. So I think I'm going to go ahead and take a copy of the footage here, duplicate it, drag it on top of our adjustment layer. In fact, let's rename this, call this CC. And I'm going to take our mask, copy it with control C, paste it onto this. Then I'm going to go down to Effect, Keen, and then Color Range. Hmm. Well, that's not working. Let's try something else. Let's see. Linear color key. All right, let's solo this layer so that I know which areas I'm selecting. And uh, let's take that as well. No, that's not working out. Let me go ahead and scrub forward to a point. There we go, just as the R2 unit comes up. Run to effect, keen, and then extract. there. This is kind of similar to blend if inside of Photoshop where I just drag, try to get the highlights to blend in with the layer below it. Alright, now let's see how that plays off. Alright, 
All right, that's looking pretty decent. Fix the masking points here. And same with this one. we probably need to do is fix the blue that's bleeding into the stormtrooper color so wonder if I can get away by doing the same thing I did previously duplicate this and then drag it right above here below the gunk droid layer copy the mask and start from the beginning copy control C and then paste it onto here And then use the same kind of technique. This just kind of really helps it fade out. There we go. Awesome possum. Now what do we need to do? Um, we probably need to fix the whites here. So the way the whites are kind of a little bit brighter and crisper and clearer. So maybe I can take the whites back a little bit. There we go. Oh yeah, that's looking very nice. No well, minus 50. And then maybe I'll add some cyan to them to try 20. Scroll back to where that R2 unit is. There he is. Maybe 50. And that gives it a little green, so maybe start adding a little bit of blue to it. We're trying to kind of get the sky to reflect off these. Yeah, not too much. need to do I need to kind of do some correction on the R2 unit there so that his um, his dome here is kind of more green like it should be so let me just go ahead and create another adjustment layer draw a mask around this guy about that uh, socket there. And 
we're going to do, you guessed it, more rotoscoping. Thankfully, this is easier and not as long. before or after the dude. Yeah, comes a little bit in before, so. I said earlier I don't know how Adewan did all this but just trying to kind of recreate what he achieved inside of After Effects get a good starting start there so let's trim this adjustment layer go ahead and go back to the middle and we'll call this R2 CC check the mask off now I'm gonna go ahead and take in a selective color I'll go down to the yellows here and add some green to them. Ah, not too bad. Awesome. And then maybe add a little bit of a uh, Cyan to the dome. There we go. Cool. That looks great. All right, what else do I need to do? Looks like there's some certain reds I need to target, like 3PO here, if I can really figure out how. And what I'll do is go down to color correction and add a hue adjustment layer for the reds. Dial the hue forward, there we go. there maybe dial that back a bit
some more saturation to the blue there. Now obviously it's not going to look exactly like the blue ray, but at least similar. Now I may need to dial this back a bit. Oh, another thing we need to do, we need to key out this here. So let's see, sky correction. So I'm going to go ahead and take the pen tool here, and then I'm just going to go ahead and draw a mask around this moisture evaporator tower. And I'm actually going to subtract it. And once again, rotoscope. Thankfully, it's just for this baby. So. I think I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for this point here just because I can. I'm almost determined to add a sharpening layer. Oops, what's this? How on earth did that get messed up? Maybe I'll just feather these out a little bit. How much does five pixels sound? All right, there we go. That looks good. Now, as I was saying there before I was rudely interrupted, I wonder what would happen if I had a sharpening layer to that. So let's see. Oh, in fact, and sharp mask. Yeah, too grainy, not worth it. And I'm just kind of going through it to see if there's anything I'm missing. Oh yeah, I think there was also the guy in the robe. Oops, there's a 
I think it's from the R2 unit. Yep. I mentioned before that I hate rotoscoping because I really do. Alright. Sweet deal. I think that looks a tad bit blotchy. Sometimes I look too close to things. But all right, there you have it, folks. That's how we color grade this shot right here. Oops, just kidding. We got something right here. What is it? Ah, it's this die. All right. So what I'm going to go ahead and have to do is duplicate this footage here, bring it up here, and then just start rotoscoping over it. I was so confident that we were about done with the grading, and I was wrong. How dare these little errors interrupt me. All right, we done? I think we are good to go, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for sticking it out with me through this long, tedious tutorial. So in the next video, I will go ahead and show you how to remove all this dirt and grain.